West Midlands Police, forcing their way into the home of a suspected drug dealer. It's the final stages of an operation that began three months earlier in the suburb of Bordesley Green, Birmingham. When this astonishing piece of CCTV footage landed on the desk of Detective Chief Inspector Nick Walton. Myself personally, an officer who's worked within Westminster Police for 17 years now, never in my policing experience have I experienced anything of this magnitude. It's 8.30 in the morning, and only a few metres away from a nursery school, a car pulls up and blocks the road. The intention? The men inside are about to deal out Class A drugs. And you'll now see a group of people, a significant volume of people, start to run down the main road towards that vehicle. Now these people, we presume, have gathered at a, an agreed point, have waited for the vehicle, have perhaps waited for other drug users to go so they get that confidence that actually this is the drug dealer and then away they go. Like children running to an ice cream van, more than 30 drug users rush towards the car. The volume is unprecedented um, and clearly within a residential street where at this time of day officers would be patrolling, you know, there's a real confidence by this drug dealer to operate in this way. The dealers in the car have taken over control of this street no other traffic can move up or down it. Really concerning around the fact that is this normal business? Is this just something that's become acceptable? But the man who captured this footage was not going to put up with it. They just pounced on the car, all four corners, like they were selling sweets. I mean, there were all of them running around, and it was mayhem. One stage, it was mayhem, and mothers and kids were just going to school, hiding their kids, dropping them off to school, and it was shocking. He watched the drug dealing getting worse and worse over the 20 years he lived there. Oh, the drugs were open, honestly. They were outside the bookies. It was open, you were going past people, and you could smell the bud. And as the dealing increased, police began to worry about other crime. If you've got 30 people gathering in this location, ready to buy drugs, you know, how have those 30 individuals gained that money at that time? And it's quite possible that crime in that area has escalated as a consequence of them being there, i.e. that dealer is a catalyst for an increase in crime in that area. With a likely link between addiction and crime, the massive problem highlighted by the Bordesley Green CCTV footage needed to be dealt with urgently. So Nick Walton starts to mastermind a plan to put the drug dealers behind bars. Enough was enough and we need to do something about this. If we were going to gain the confidence of our community, we needed to be seen to do something about what was clearly an endemic problem within their community. Nick calls in a specialist team of undercover officers. Like this man. We can't reveal his identity, but we'll call him Paul. Undercover officers like Paul first have to get close to the drug gangs. They get to know who to focus on. Then they use miniature surveillance equipment to record the dealing. My function is to try and gain the best footage that I can of these people uh, in order for the matter to go to court um, and for the jury to understand exactly what's going on. It is all about the patience, but deep down you sort of know and hope that you will get that shot eventually if you're patient enough. What he manages to film leaves no doubt that heroin and cocaine are being openly dealt throughout Bordesley Green. Dealers have even taken over the local park and children's playground. We have been given access to the police surveillance footage. What you're about to see is a transaction that will take place. The man in the red top has handed a small amount of drugs to the man in the blue top with whom he's working. And there you'll see cash change hands from the drug user. And in return for that cash, which is ordinarily £10, £20, they will receive a small amount of heroin or crack cocaine. Gathering this covert footage is essential work but there are risks for the undercover officers. Sometimes you have to take those chances and ultimately if you get that footage then it's worthwhile and you just hope that the, when it's played in court that the people see exactly what's going on. This is a park area where children play. One of the dealers has gone into the bushes, has clearly recovered an amount and there we've just seen an exchange take place where the drug user has put the item in his pocket and will then leave the area. Filming goes on for weeks. The dealer's mobile phones give more evidence. The phone is effectively the business. 
mobile phones were taking somewhere in the region of 655 phone calls per day. When those calls are analysed, it's estimated that between them, the dealers are doing £8,000 worth of business a day. After weeks of intensive evidence gathering, the operation moves into the next stage, making the arrests. And it's done on a huge scale. Around 80 officers a day will bring in the dealers. It's quite important for us to arrest them at the same time, to prevent them potentially giving accounts leaving a police station and then telling other people what they've said to the police so we have an opportunity to undermine them by interviewing them all at the same time. Also, we can catch them unawares. The operation is a massive success. They managed to get every one of the dealers they've targeted. There's at least 28, 29 people who are currently in custody. Really pleasing for us the fact that those people felt that the evidential case against them was so strong that they pleaded guilty at the earliest opportunity. And the icing on the cake? Through some work with other agencies, we've even managed to target the person who sat at the head of that network, and he has also been convicted. All these drug dealers went down. Between them, they will spend over 100 years in prison. And since the arrests, burglaries and robberies have dropped locally by 20%. The man whose footage kicked off this whole operation has seen a big change in his neighbourhood. It has been sorted out. They've, they've, I've, had, I've, I've never seen no word drug dealing there no more. Fundamentally improved the area tenfold. We went into that community shortly after and started to have face-to-face -face dialogue with local community members who clearly were telling us that the fact that these individuals had been arrested was key to them feeling more empowered within their own communities. The area was really rough, there was loads of crimes and I think it's much better now that you can walk around safe. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's a massive difference. We are happy with what we're seeing. What we've done is named and shamed, which again has been really well received by the community. We've even gone into local schools and had conversations with you know, the youth in the area to say this is not something you need to aspire to and if you do get involved in the drug supply market you will be enforced against and you will go to prison.